Hey Siri, set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Starting? Shalom and welcome back to Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. My name is Elder Tori and I am delighted to be back on this platform once again to be able to minister the word during this study session. Not sure what time it is that you guys are tuning in with us, but I'm, like I said, I'm excited to be back here to be able to minister once again. Before we jump right on in, just want to take a moment to thank Dr. Larry for allowing me to be on this platform to be able to minister once again. Dr. Larry, I thank you just for your training and development. Um, so with that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump right on in. And the area that I will be spending some time in today is true repentance and remorse. Now, these are two things that I'm definitely really just excited to jump right on in. There are so many misconceptions that surround repentance, that surround remorse, especially in the Christianity and religious realm. So definitely want to spend some time making sure that we have a good, solid understanding of what repentance is. And it's so important that as ambassadors, we have a good, solid understanding, the understanding that Elohim wants his people to to have because Christianity, religion has created their own ideas and doctrine around what repentance is. And if you rely solely on what religion teaches, you can definitely miss the mark. So we are going to go ahead and jump right on in. So a couple of things we'll be talking about today is is repentance and remorse the same thing? Like I just said, Christianity has definitely, and religion has definitely created their own ideas and doctrine around repentance. Did you know that there are laws to repentance? I didn't either. So we'll talk about some of that tonight. Um, how do I know if I've truly repented? And this is especially important because many times I know I was taught growing up, uh, I'll say around church because I didn't go, I wasn't fully committed to going to church. That's not something that we did regularly for me when I was growing up. But I was one of those people that if I thought that if I just confessed that I was okay, and especially when I was in college, I found myself confessing every single weekend, but I never repented. So we're going to talk about what confession is as well as it relates to repentance and how important it is. And what does repentance look like? So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and move on to our next note. But before we really get any farther, I want to take a minute to talk about um, Yeshua's first message. And so if we look at this scripture right here in Matthew Yahu, it reads, from that time, Yeshua began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So it's really important why I want to, well, let me rephrase that. I want to spend some time with this particular scripture because if you look here, it says the first message that Yeshua taught was repent. Yeshua didn't say, go get saved first. He didn't give us a law first. Well, uh, well, the repent is a law, but he didn't say, follow this law, follow that law. Don't do this. Don't do that. The very first thing he said was repent. And it's so important. Really, the Holy Spirit is really just impressing on me that, um, it's so important for us to understand, understand repentance because you can't live a lifestyle that is pleasing to the father without first repenting. So it's so important that as ambassadors, we make sure that we have a solid understanding of what repentance is. But that was the first thing that Yeshua said that we should do. We should first repent. So that leads me to my next point of what is repentance. I know growing up, I heard repent, you know, confess and for me growing up, confessing and repentance was interchangeable. I really had this idea that if I confessed that I repented, that I was okay. And like I mentioned before, when I was in college, I found myself confessing every single weekend. So I found myself trying to pre-plan 
plan my repentance with my pre-planned sin. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but it wasn't something that I, that sin that I was involved in, I wasn't trying to turn away from it. I wasn't trying to give it up, but because I had been taught wrong, I really believed that, okay, well, I was going to do what I was going to do over the weekend. When Monday came, I was going to confess and I was okay until the next weekend. So that's why we really need to understand what repentance is. Repentance isn't just a confession. So let's take a moment to look at this word repent in the Hebrew. And if we look at this word, um, so if we look at repentance in Hebrew, it's shuv. Now, if this, if this is your first time tuning in with us here at Empowerment of Faith, not only do we study from the Hebrew, but we also teach from the Hebrew. So if we look at shuv here, Shuv is comprised of three Hebrew letter words, and each Hebrew letter is a letter word. So each word has a meaning. So our very first letter of Shuv is Shin, and Shin means to destroy. In the center, you have a Vav, and that Vav is to connect or establish. And at the very end, you have a billet, which means what's controlling what's on the inside. So if we look at the word repent, it means to destroy what has been established on the inside. And that's really important for us to make sure that we have that understanding. And when you repent, you have to destroy that sin on the inside that is controlling you. You have to destroy that thing that is implanted in your belief system and trying to tear you down and take you down. And this is important that we make sure we understand. So if you, whatever your sin may be or whatever the sin or the actions that you're committing that is sinful, you got to completely turn away from that. You can't go back and forth. See, this definition of shoot didn't say, okay, well, do it sometimes and then confess. There was nothing in this Hebrew definition that talked about, oh, well, confessing something and then going right on and and confession is a part of repentance we are going to talk about that but Shuv is telling us to turn completely destroy it if you destroy something burn it up it doesn't have an opportunity to come back up because you've gotten rid of it and that's important that we have to understand you can't play with this either you're going to be done with it or you're not you know especially many times in the religious realm People have gotten the tendency to feel okay with going to the altar every single week. They have gotten okay with just, oh, confessing, but never really taking the action to turn, to shoot, to completely turn away from that sin. Many people can talk, 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 but you got to make a decision to really stop doing something in order to receive the benefits of repentance, to receive that true repentance. Because the thing is, once we repent, we put ourselves in the position for the Father to cleanse us. So we put ourselves in a position to live out a lifestyle of holiness. So one thing that I want to point out before we move on, I've mentioned confession. And when we confess, let's read this here. It says that if you confess with your mouth, the uh, the Lord the Lord, if you confess with your mouth, you're sure and believe in your heart that Elohim raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, this is important. And many times people have used this. They've overused it. They've misused it that, you know, if I confess with my mouth, you know, I'm saved. Yes, confession is part of it. But confession is owning up and acknowledging that error. But if you don't change, if you don't choose, truly repent, you can't receive the benefits of, of, of repenting and living a lifestyle that is pleasing to the Father. So let's go on to, I should have put that back up, pull that back up and move on to our next point. So let's take a moment to just talk about the power of repentance. So if we read here, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them 
and forgive their sins and heal their land. Now, there's a lot that is going on in this scripture, and we're going to spend a little bit of time here, and we're going to break it down. So one thing that we we mentioned that shuv means to destroy, to turn um, from what's established on the inside. So if we look here, it said, he said, um, and let me correct the semantics on this. It says, if my people, which will call by my now name should be authority. Okay. Um, so shall humble themselves, seek my face, uh, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So that's the first thing they had to completely turn. They had to shoo. The thing about confession, you can confess, 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 confess. You can talk all day long, but they had to completely turn away from their wicked ways. If they turn from their wicked ways, see, the thing is about that turning is if they were to turn the father, that gives the, op the father the opportunity to cleanse them. And that's important because one thing is, is that the father does not override our wills. The father does not make us do anything. The father isn't going to force his cleansing on us. And many times, especially with confession, there's this miss. There's a misunderstanding that if I'm confessed, if I confess, I cl I'm cleansed. But it's that returning, that turning, that burning, that sand up that allows the Father to cleanse us. So if they would have turned from their wicked ways, the Father could come in and clean them up. Then it says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. So not only did this turning from their wicked ways, the Father could hear them. They were cleansed. They would be in a position of righteousness for the father to hear the father can't it, the scripture tells us that um the only prayer that a, a pr the only prayer <laughs> that a sinner should pray is the prayer of repentance the only prayer that they should be submitting to the father is 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 is, is repenting and turning away so it says once they've turned from their wicked ways, it put them in a position for the father to hear. So you can't bring any sin, any dirt, any darkness before the father because he is pure. Okay. So it says, um, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. So if they repented, the father would have cleansed them. If they repented, it would have put them in a position to be restored. See, it says he would heal their land. And that's another beauty, beautiful thing about repentance is that the father restores us. The father will re the father restores us. The father, when we truly repent, see, he doesn't continue to let he doesn't continue to bring up our sin he doesn't continue to throw that in the face in our face the scripture says he remembers that as far as the east is from the west so he's forgotten about that once he truly forgives you he forgives you and that puts you in a position to live out a lifestyle that is pleasing to him that puts you in a position to have a new direction on how to live so repentance is so important it's not just oh just this confession repentance takes work there's action that follows repenting and 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 yeah there's action that follows uh repenting so let's keep on moving now that we see that there is power in repentance and how much the father wants to do for us but like i mentioned earlier he can't override your will he can't force his repentance or his cleansing on someone and to be honest the father doesn't want to force himself on us he wants us to come to him and we yes many times we're taught that um especially in the religious realm it's taught that i have a free will i have a free will yes as as human legal humans in the earth yes you do have a free will but one thing that's not taught is how dangerous it is to have a free will all right so we are going to and and keep on moving yes we're going to keep on moving okay so as we continue in this same vein of true repentance we just talked about it we in that last scripture we mentioned that it cleanses us so let's take a look here move this up so i can see um, moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you 
uh, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will be careful to obey my ordinance. So let's talk about this for a minute. When we repent, when we should, we make that decision. See, yes, we talked about it cleanses us. It puts us in the right position. But the thing is now that you renew, you have to live a new lifestyle. See, you which as we think back on our definition of shuv, you burn that up. You got rid of everything. Uh, you, well, you got rid of that darkness. You got rid of that sin that was consuming and controlling your life. And so now the father has put um, the Holy Spirit is here to help us to live out a life that is pleasing to him. And so even in that, the Holy Spirit, after we've repented, the Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit will remind us of the father's of the father the holy spirit will help us live out a way that is live out a life that is pleasing to the father scripture tells us that he will send a helper send an advocate to help us and many times people who especially in the religious realm that chooses to focus on um just repenting 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 um when we are made new you are a new being you know, you've been regenerated. So with this new lifestyle, with this, new, well, I, I'm going to phrase it, with this cleansing, there comes a new lifestyle, a new way of living, a new direction. And the father isn't going to cleanse us and be like, oh, figure it out. He's not going to do that. See, he's going to teach us. And part of that learning how to live a lifestyle that's pleasing to the father, part of it is being in his word and seeking his face and having that fellowship, having a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of being in his presence and seeking his face. But also the Holy Spirit would just remind us and urge us of things that we shouldn't do anymore. I can remember when I actually got born again for real and was trying to really live a lot, a clean lifestyle that was pleasing to the father, there were certain things that I just couldn't do anymore. And at the time, some of those things, I couldn't explain why I didn't feel right. I couldn't explain why I just, just had this, just this feeling that I could, I can't do this anymore. I can't listen to this type of music anymore. I can't watch these types of movies anymore. And what that was because I had been regenerated because I had repented and really turned the Holy spirit was, um, was teaching me that certain was teaching me that certain things weren't okay. And as I continued to seek the father, as I learned his word, I was able to say, okay, that's why I couldn't watch that movie anymore. Okay, that's why I wasn't okay wearing those things. Because many times, if you understand, let me, I'm trying to phrase this right. Many times you can not understand a concept, but if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit trying to teach you, the Holy Spirit to tell you certain things that that are that aren't acceptable for a kingdom believer. And so that's that thing. Once you're cleansed, you're made new, you're put in a position and the father doesn't leave us high and dry. The father doesn't just put, doesn't cleanse us. Okay, now you figure it out. He helps us, but at the same time, we have to be seeking his face so that we can remain in a spirit, remain in a position of righteousness, remain in a position of being clean so we can continue to live out this lifestyle, okay? So the next thing, it results in change. So let's take a moment. If so I want to take a moment to look at Shayo. And the thing is, before we jump right on into that, the thing is, if you've confessed and there's no change that wasn't true repentance. You confess that many times if you were like me, I was lying. I knew I was lying when I was confessing five, when I was confessing every single weekend when I was in college. If you repent, you really change because the thing is, especially if the the as born again believers, you don't have this, you have a do right nature. And there, your spirit is going to desire to please the father, but you have to make that decision to submit to your spirit so that you can uh, live out a lifestyle that's pleasing to the father. So let's take a moment to look at Shayo and Mishle 6, 4 and 15. And so I'm not going to read all of this for the sake of time, but what I do want to point out is down here um, in verse 6. I was near Damascus at once around noon, I, around noon. I saw a bright light from heaven shining around me. I fell to the ground. A voice spoke to me. Sheol, Sheol. 
why do you work so hard against me? I said, who are you, Lord? He said to me, I am Yeshua of Nazareth, the one you are working against, the one who, the one who were, those who were with me, quote, those who were with me saw the light, but they did not hear him speaking to me. I asked, Lord, what shall I do? The Lord said to me, get up, go to Damascus, and you will be told what to do there. I could not see because of the bright light. Those who were with me had to lead me by the hand until we came to Damascus. Ananias lived there. He obeyed the law and was respected by all the Jews. He came and stood near me and said, Brother Sheol, receive your sight. At once I was able to see. Then Ananias, then Ananias said, the Elohim of your fathers chose you to know what he wants done. He chose you to see Yeshua the Messiah, the right one with Elohim, and to hear his voice. When you, you are to tell all men what you have seen and heard, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, have your sin washed away, calling on his authority. And again, I say authority instead of name because it is the authority that we get things done in the earth. So what I want to point out here is that if you read all of it and you know a little bit about Sheol's life, Sheol was killing believers. He was actually, on when he was on the way to Damascus, he was actually on his way to um. Well, let me, let me just say that he was killing believers. And when he was on his way to Damascus, the father, the light hit him. And so after he had that encounter, he changed. He shoved, and the scripture tells us just as hard as he was working at killing ambassadors, that was as hard as he was working for the father. And so if you, one fruit of true repentance is change. It'll show up in you. Like I mentioned before, it was certain things, like I mentioned before, it's just certain things that once you truly repent, you're not going to do anymore. You, that, that flesh we have to rule over and that flesh may have that desire to do something that is against the father. That flesh may have a desire to do something that is outside of the will of the father, but your spirit, you once you choose to submit to your spirit, your spirit is not want to go is not going to desire to live a lifestyle of continuous rebellion live a lifestyle of continuous sin all right um so let's keep going uh true repentance gives you hope it encourages you and it stops shame and guilt all right and so that's one thing i want to spend just a brief second on is that one thing is that scripture tells us that he gives us in Yeremia 29 and 11, it says he gives us a future and a hope so that when we repent, when we turn truly shub and we change and live out that lifestyle that is pleasing to the father, you'll have courage. You'll be hopeful. Imagine Sheol as he made that change, he could have been run down with guilt that he had been killing ambassadors. Yes, that as many people say that guilt is a very natural thing to feel. But once you have changed and you repent and you've been cleansed, see when that guilt comes up, you speak to that guilt and you say, hey, I'm no longer living there. Hey, I am. I have been cleansed. I have been restored and you keep going. Scripture tells us that he remembers our transgressions as far as the East is from the West. And one thing about the East and the West is that they never meet anymore. So the father is not going to continue to throw in your face what you've done. The father is not going to run you down with, sh with shame and guilt. If anything, the father will encourage us. The father, even through his correction, scripture tells us that he corrects those that he loves. And once you and you do have to mature to the point to where you learn to accept um, correction as a good thing. And I, and and once you get to that point, you are you will learn to rejoice in correction. That's one thing that I have learned. And I'm not saying at the time when I'm getting corrected that it feels great. Yes, it do, it is hard to be corrected, but it's rejoice. I rejoice because I know what scripture tells me that he loves those that he corrects. And so it gives me hope. It gives me encouragement that yes, I can keep going, that I will keep living this lifestyle because the father took time to correct me. So even in that correction, there's no guilt and shame in us being corrected and 
you can have a remorse or a guilt and a shame that's like where you recognize your error, man, I messed up, but it's not going to run you down. It's not going to destroy your life. And many times, especially with guilt and shame, guilt will eat a person up. Guilt, many people, I'll stop right there because that's something that we are going to talk about. But it doesn't, once you truly repent it, you're not run down with guilt and shame and embarrassment. And people may try to bring up your past, but that's not where you are. Scripture tells us to fear not the one who can kill the body and fear not the one who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill the body and the soul. And the father comes to give us life and life more abundantly. Okay, so we are winding down on our time and also true repentance requires confession it requires confession and many times with confession confession is simply owning up to your error owning up to what you did wrong and acknowledging that and once you can't you can't turn from something or you can't burn something up if you don't even know what you did you can't yeah, you can't turn from your sin if you don't know what you did was wrong. And so part of being part of repentance is that you got to know what you did wrong. And the father, he'll show us exactly what we did wrong and what we need to change. So we're going to um, hit this. We are actually going to, um, we'll go through this. All right, so. Well, we already mentioned this guilt and shame that it can consume you. Yes, it, guilt and shame will consume you. You speak to that guilt and shame and you keep dominating, um, ruling, dominating your mind, dominating when, when Satan tries to remind you of what you did, you remind him of where you where you're going. And that comes from being in the father's face, seeking his word. The father will tell you who you are and who you are. And the Holy Spirit will remind you of who you are. So one thing that after you've true after you truly repented, you speak to that guilt and shame. Um and one thing is that we, yeah, so we will actually stop right there. I hope you, I did not get to finish. Um, so I hope you guys will tune in with us next time to get the rest of this. And if you have not already, be sure to like and share and be sure to subscribe to our channel and shalom.